All right, so Mortal Kombat has finally dropped, and here is the review. Also, don't forget. Your soul is mine. What is going on, fellow board members? Welcome to the boardroom. I am Mords, and today we are doing our review of the Mortal Kombat movie, the latest in the movie franchise for Mortal Kombat, the video game. Um, if you guys remember, you're probably about my age. Those of you watching, you know that we watched, we had the two movies when we were younger. Um, I actually really enjoy both of those movies. I think the first one being a little bit better than the second one, uh, but there are things about the second one I enjoyed, uh, and I did watch it a lot when I was a kid. Uh, but anyway, guys, this is the review for the new Mortal Kombat movie uh, very excited to dive into it so let's go all right so before we dive into this review if you guys are new to the channel please make sure you hit that subscription button down below we are on the road to 1500 subscribers and you guys can help me by doing so I would very much appreciate it now on to the review so this is a m maybe mild spoiler non spoiler review I'm gonna kind of just talk about some of the things that I remember I have some notes here that we're gonna go over uh, but first and foremost, uh, the opening of the movie I really, really enjoyed. Uh, I, I always loved the whole uh, story behind Scorpion uh, and Hanso and how he lost his family to Sub-Zero. Um, if you guys have seen, uh, I think it was a Scorpion's Revenge, the animated DC movie. If you guys haven't seen that, I suggest go watching that if you enjoyed this movie. I honestly think that movie is a little bit better than this one. Uh, but that's just how DC animators do it. They're usually pretty good. So uh, compared to that one, I, I really enjoyed the beginning of this one. It's, it's very reminiscent of that Scorpion's Revenge movie, uh, but it's quite a bit different when it comes to storyline. But I did enjoy the opening to this. I thought the fight scene was great. Uh, gore right out of the window, exactly what you expect from Mortal Kombat. Uh, there is a bit of a twist in there, though, which isn't the normal thing and again how they introduce this new Cole character that goes on in there um, which to be honest guys the main character Cole I did not like I didn't really like the guy portraying him the act the actor doing his, his acting thing I didn't really care for it I didn't like the character um, wasn't a big fan of the whole family uh, family thing I, I feel like it kind of took you out of the, the Mortal Kombat thing when you would have the scenes with this family um, just it was it didn't do it for me with that regard um and i really there's a whole lot into it guys I, i'm gonna go into it a little bit more uh with the cole character but just just off the bat i really did not like the cole character so to elaborate a little bit more on the cole character and why i don't really like him not only did i think the acting was kind of bad i also uh think that if you're going to introduce a new character into a franchise you got to do it gradually not right out of the gate so we get an entire movie of a main character we uh, have just met when uh, I think some of the best parts of this movie are when we get characters that we have known for a long time. Uh, nostalgia is big in this movie, um, and you could have really just wrote off a nostalgia with that instead of introducing a new character. Uh, like I said, with this family, the family scenes with Cole, I did not like that at all. I thought that kind of took me out of the whole Mortal Kombat essence of it. Uh, I did not like uh, his powers that he ends up getting. Uh, I did not like... Um, how the end was kind of handled a little bit. There are a lot of things about this movie I didn't like, but there are also a lot of things I did like about this movie. Um, like I said, the nostalgia factor of it hits very hard. Um, you know, I really liked the Cabal character. I thought it was interesting that they introduced him and how they introduced him and how it all uh, rolls into one thing. Um, uh, well, it rolls into... I like how Cabal rolls into the, the storyline of it. Um, and I thought they did they did that character justice. I loved his costume. Uh, honestly, he was probably one of my favorite characters in this. Uh, just if you're talking about uh, nostalgia, for nostalgia's sake, he's probably one of my favorite characters in there. I thought they did get a job, a uh, good job on that character. So I think one of the weakest introductions of a character in this movie is the uh, Liu Kang character. Uh, we all know and love Liu Kang from the originals. Uh, we look to him as kind of like the leader of the pack. At least that's how he's portrayed in the original movies. Uh, so going into this one, kind of assuming that would be the case when really I think Liu Kang again one of the franchise favorites it becomes kind of a background character um, and they do kind of make him seem a little weak as if he hasn't had any struggles uh, or dealt with anything um, and I really did enjoy the storyline of the original with his brother and that whole thing uh, really give him a reason to fight harder uh, and he didn't seem like such a you know kind of a background character and, and kind of uh, you know, a little weak. I feel like they made him out to be a little weak in this movie. And and, and it's unfortunate because I really like the character of Liu Kang. So there is an element in this movie with Sonya Blade that I think is very interesting. Um, and it kind of gives her character a little bit more to work for. Uh, I enjoyed that. However, um, through the process of the film, Sonya does get her powers. And I'm not a big fan of, of 
uh, how they did it, how they went about it. We don't really know how she gets her powers. Um, we see how she gets uh, this tattoo that people got, which are the Chosen Warriors. Uh, that that's how you know you're a chosen warrior. You have the dragon tattoo, uh, so we know how she gets that, but we don't exactly know because uh, the element is is you have to trigger your powers. You have to find uh, inside of you what what brings those powers out, which is something similar to what they did in the original movies with the animalities and and finding your inner uh, inner creature, your inner strength. Uh, when you know you have the scene of Night Wolf in the original uh, talking with Liu Kang, which I, I loved that stuff in the back uh, back in the day with the uh, I think that was Annihilation where they did that the animality side of things. Uh, it was kind of like that in this movie, but we don't know how Sonya does. It's like one second she has it, and then there's no work beyond that. Which if you see the other characters actually have to work to 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 gain their powers. Um, so uh, yeah, I didn't like the way they did that with Sonya Blade, but I thought her character uh, overall uh, was fine. I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, and uh, I think she was in the movie for the perfect amount of time. Side note, I absolutely love uh, Jax as the character from Mortal Kombat. He's one of my favorite characters to play with. Um, I did enjoy how they put it together in, in this movie. Uh, there's a scene with him and Sub-Zero that is just absolutely brutal. It makes sense. Uh, there is a little bit of storyline I would love for them to fill in, maybe in a comic book or something, about how, uh, you know, what happens to Jax and then how they get him back. I would love to see that that part of the storyline, which we did not get in the movie. And maybe there's deleted scenes, I don't know, but I would love to know how that happened. So throughout the movie, there's this uh, connection. Uh, obviously, uh, Cole having the, the lineage of Hanso, who eventually becomes Scorpion. Uh, the way that they did that, they connected those together. I don't feel like there was really uh, any um, ending to it. Uh, like throughout the movie, he would get these these flash uh, these flashes in his mind uh, of Hanso down in hell, basically becoming Scorpion. Uh, but it never really like ties into the movie or has this like, uh, for I guess for lack of a better term, uh, you know, uh, money shot uh, <laughs> in the movie. When it comes to that, it, you just get the images and then. Uh, Scorpion shows up. There's really no like connection or Cole really understanding where he comes from. There's not a whole lot of explanation behind that. I would have loved to do something along the lines of like maybe even how the Ninja Turtles did it, uh, where he's meditating and then Hanzo comes and explains to him his lineage. Uh, but I, I, there, there feels like an emotional disconnect there between the Cole character and the Hanzo character, which uh, there should be a, a very good connection considering the fact that he is his heir. Uh, and he is carrying on, um, you know, the legacy that's uh, or the prophecy uh, that is to come. So, uh, yeah, I just feel like that lacked a little bit. They could have made a better connection uh, between uh, Scorpion or Hanzo and uh, Cole. Uh, just my opinion. In my opinion, there is a handful of characters that I feel they could have spent more time on and didn't really give the light of day. One of them being Goro. I absolutely loved the way they handled Goro in the original movies with the whole, uh, you know, live action feel, uh, the special effects, the, the practical effects with Goro. I actually thought they did a really great job with Goro in the original. So this Goro being a CGI, I kind of feel like they really didn't bring it home with this Goro. Uh, they kind of built him up a little bit, uh, talking about how he's the blood of Shao Kahn, and it doesn't re that character doesn't really go anywhere. And it's unfortunate because him being uh, such a huge part of the franchise, not only in the original movies but in the games, uh, I feel like uh, they just kind of didn't really seem that make that character seem as badass as uh, he should have been. Uh, and and really that is kind of with a few characters. Again, Liu Kang, um, not being as badass as you think Liu Kang would be, but uh, again. Just all my perception. Now, beginning to wrap up this review, I, I think what it comes down to is I wanted more Scorpion in this. I wanted more Hanzo. I wanted more of that story. I thought the beginning was great. It set it up. Uh, we get it in the beginning, and then uh, we really don't get more Scorpion until towards the end of the movie, and that's disappointing to me. Uh, we don't even really get reflections of Scorpion inside Cole, which would have been cool. I would have even been okay with Cole taking over the mantle of Scorpion. Uh, I, I really wish we would have gotten more Scorpion. And again, like I said, Cole could have taken over that position and passed on the lineage. Um, and Yeah, I, again, more Scorpion. Uh, he is probably one of the most famous characters out of Mortal Kombat, one of the most favorite characters out of Mortal Kombat. Everybody has to play with him. Everybody's got to do his move. I do like the way they put it all together with the weapons uh, of Scorpion, how they kind of tied the uh, the uh, got the sh shuriken. I think that's what it is. Uh, but uh, they, they tie that in with uh, the character. That's really the only thing that kind of ties Cole 
with Scorpion uh, in this movie is the tool that his mom's using at the beginning to uh, garden, and then he uses it, and then it gets passed. So really, that is the only thing uh, that really ties Hanzo Scorpion to, to Cole. And I really, really wanted more Scorpion in this. So my final thoughts on the Mortal Kombat movie are... Uh, if you like nostalgia, this hits all the nostalgia bones. The moments when the nostalgia is happening are great. The fight scenes are fun. Uh, there is, it, it's weird because it kind of takes you in, uh, it puts you in and it takes you out. It's really a yo-yo a effect with this movie where you get scenes that kind of take you out of it and then you get those nostalgic scenes uh, that pull you in, uh, pull you back into it. So I think I think the nostalgia of it is fine. I don't think there's too much uh, saturation of it. It's uh, it's evenly keeled throughout the movie. Again, you get those moments where it brings you in back to that where you're like, oh, this character are awesome. Oh, I get to see this uh, that, that I remember from when I was a kid, either playing the games or watching the movie. So there, there's a lot of nostalgia to it. Uh, definitely gore in there. They went out uh, all out with the fatalities, which I think I, I would have been nice to see more of those. Uh, but I guess you got to leave some for the sequel, which kind of brings me to the end of the movie. We're hinted at a sequel. Um, some people may not like I, I thought it was fine. I thought it was interesting. Again, playing on the nostalgia factor. What it comes down to, this is a nod to the fans. And if you enjoyed any of the other Mortal Kombat stuff from the past, you're going to enjoy this at least somewhat. Uh, I f I'm still mixed about the movie. I want to I want to like it because it's Mortal Kombat, but at the same time, uh, there are things about it that just kind of take me out of it. I'm like, no, that's that's not how that would have went down. Uh, but hey, you know what? At the end of the day, we're just looking for good entertainment to to uh, take us out of reality, something that we can uh, sit down, eat some popcorn too, and just have fun. And I did have fun with this movie for the most part. And again, those moments of nostalgia, uh, those fight scenes that come in, uh, those really work. Uh, for the movie and, and the other stuff I, I could probably do without uh, but uh, I'll be interested to see what they do with the sequel guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the movie if you've seen it if you're going to see it, if you're going to see it in the theaters or if you're going to see it in HBO Max me personally I watched it here in HBO Max kind of glad I did uh, but it would have been a good movie to see in theaters I think as well uh, but it was nice that I was able to do it here at home so I could do this review and kind of really sit down and, and soak it all in but uh, there are great things about this movie. There are bad things about this movie. And, and at the end of the day, uh, if you're one of those people that like to sit down with a bucket of popcorn and tune out for a while, I think this would be a good movie for you. My suggestion is, uh, after you watch this movie, go watch Scorpion's Revenge, the animated series, uh, the DC animated series. Uh, go check that out. If you enjoyed the movie, I think you'll enjoy that as well. Uh, that is the review. Uh, I give it a, we'll give it a good solid, uh, I say seven out of 10. Uh, seven giving it a seven because of the the nostalgia factor it really works i really enjoyed that i really enjoyed seeing the characters um i really hated cole's like once cole got his uh, his powers i really hated the this outfit that he was wearing the suit the costume design to me was terrible uh they could have done a lot better uh with what they had but uh but either way guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of the movie uh, and that, sorry, that was just a point I had to add in or I, I totally remembered. But anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the movie. All right, so there it is. That's my review of the Mortal Kombat movie that just dropped on HBO Max and in theaters. Uh, again, let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of the movie. Uh, uh, also, if you guys, again, are new to the channel, we are on the road to 1,500 subscribers. Please make sure you hit that subscription button down below uh, and help make that happen. Thank you all for watching this video. I love all of you guys, and we will catch you on the other side. Peace.